So, jetzt bin ich endlich mal mit dem Geschirrspülen fertig und kann endlich ein Video für euch machen. Hi guys and welcome back. No, you did not click on the wrong video. I'll explain later. So today I thought that I'd finally take some time to answer your questions. The questions that you asked me in my 20k subscriber milestone celebration a couple of months before as well as from the video where am I from. So let's start. First question, what is your mother language? If your mother language is not English, how could you get totally fluently speaking in English? <sighs> okay, what is my mother language? Let's start by defining that. Mother language refers to the first language or native language that a person learns from birth or infancy. It's also commonly referred to as mother tongue or first language. This is the language that a person typically learns naturally from their parents, family and immediate community. Now, based on this definition, my mother language would be German, but it gets a bit complicated because my parents obviously are not German. Their native language, their mother language was not German. So since I was born, since I was a baby, my parents, my both my mom and dad, they only spoke German to me. And since I was living in Germany, so I was born in Germany, I grew up there. Everyone in my immediate surroundings, our neighbors, friends, uh, people at the daycare and so on, they obviously all spoke German. So if those things are sufficient for the requirement of mother language, then yes, my mother language is German. Next part of the question, if your mother language is not English, how could you get totally fluent speaking in English? Um, I think I'm relatively fluent in English, although my English is not perfect by any means. So I guess one of the things that contributed to my ability to speak English was having lived in the States as a child. Yes, I know it's getting a bit complicated. I just told you that I was born and raised in Germany, but then I also lived in the States. So yes, I lived together with my family in the States approximately from the age of four-ish to six, almost seven, I don't remember precisely, but in total about two and a half years. We lived in a small town in Ohio and during that time I went to kindergarten and then also first grade. So I'd say that I picked up most of my English during that time and that was also the first time I ever learned English because my parents never taught me any English before. But as you guys know, children pick up a new language super, super fast and so did I. But after after that, well, we moved back to Germany and I practically didn't speak any English at all. So that's where my English got a bit lost again over the years and over the decades. But in my mid 20s, I actually worked in Singapore for two years and there the official, the working language is English. So every day I spoke English again, but most of the people around me would have a rather Singlish accent. So it was only when I moved to Canada almost six years ago that I really started to intensively use the English language. And it's funny because nowadays I rarely speak any German except with my parents sometimes. I kind of gotten really used to speaking English and that's actually my preferred language nowadays. Let's go on to the next question. Can we hear you speak a bit of German? So I just did that in the beginning of this video. If English is not your first language, then you're probably used to this question. Uh, after someone finds out where you're from, they ask you to say something in that language. And then you start thinking, oh, what should I say? My name is, I'm from blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so let's just think of something more interesting. Ich habe gerade mein Geschirr abgespült und es hat sich eine ganze Menge angesammelt seit heute Morgen. Heute Morgen hatten wir ein richtig schönes Frühstück. Ich habe ein Ei gegessen, eine Scheibe Brot mit Butter und dann Joghurt mit äh, Früchten, mit vielen Beeren. Ich hatte sogar Zeit, etwas Sport zu machen. Dann habe ich geduscht und nun sitze ich endlich vor der Kamera mit einer Tasse Kaffee und erzähle euch Geschichten über die Vergangenheit. Ja! Yeah. So that was it. Now on to the next question. Did you ever happen to learn Chinese by any chance? And the answer unfortunately is no, I do not speak Chinese. I don't speak any Chinese dialect, uh, neither do I speak Mandarin. And I know it's kind of ironic because my name Chu Yantan is a Chinese name. But the way that I'm pronouncing my own name is probably unrecognizable to many Chinese watching right now. Somehow I feel that my name and the way that we, my family pronounce it kind of got 
assimilated to the local cultures and languages that we lived in. And this is actually something that's very common. There are not only Chinese, ethnic Chinese in China, but Chinese are actually all around the world. And many overseas Chinese, especially the younger generation, they do not speak any Chinese at all. I do know a few words, but I'm very hesitant to speak any Chinese because I always get those intonations wrong and I know that if you speak it differently it can mean something totally different so for now until I learn it properly I'll just avoid it next question which also ties into this which is where are you originally from it is in fact a bit complicated as I told you earlier I was born in Germany but my parents both my parents are from Indonesia a country in Southeast Asia which capital is Jakarta and by the way soon I'll make a video about my recent trip to Jakarta so they are Chinese Indonesian they were born there they grew up there but I lived in Germany and I only moved to Indonesia and lived there when I was 11 years old so I'll leave it at that if you want to know more details about where I'm from and where I live and everything then you can check out this video over here next question how come so much mobility yeah that's something a lot of people ask me why am I moving around so much so before i was 17 before i started studying i mostly moved around just following my parents because of their career paths because of their life plans for example when i was in germany in kindergarten my father who at that time already had a phd decided that he wanted to do a postdoc in the states so that's why we as a family moved to the states and lived there for two years but then again he got an opportunity in in Germany at the Max Planck Institute and that is why we all of us moved back to Germany again and the same thing happened when we moved to Indonesia I as a minor merely followed my parents but I must say that I perhaps kind of got used to that life that life of moving around of new beginnings that wasn't something that was scary or strange to me so after I became an adult I kind of continued on that path so from Indonesia, after finishing high school, I moved back to Germany again to study and I moved to different cities. But then I also spent two years working in Singapore and then I moved to Canada. I immigrated to Canada where I am now. Next question. Doesn't Canada subsidize their movie makers? Are you being subsidized? So for those of you who don't know yet, I'm a filmmaker. I haven't been making films in a long time, but a couple of years ago in Indonesia, I, my husband and I, we actually produced two feature films. One film had a theatrical release and the other was distributed online. And back then, the reason that we wanted to move to Canada was because Canada had a thriving film industry and we wanted to learn from Canada. But then many things got in the way and then it took a while to settle and then I became a content creator. I wrote a book and uh, somehow my career path just diverged from that. And apart from a short film I made during my postgraduate certificate studies, and by the way, if you want to watch that short film, it's a dystopian thriller. You can watch it here on my other channel. I've not made any movies, but something is in the works. And by the way, guys, for those of you who have been following me on this channel for a while, you know that on this channel, I talk about living in Canada, daily life, traveling, how to get financially ahead and so on. But I actually have another channel called Multiple Careers. And on that channel, I talk more about my career, my previous career path, how I changed careers from being a banker. Yes, I work at a bank, at a multinational bank, to now becoming a content creator and filmmaker and also a book author. And I generally talk about how you can have a fulfilling career so for all those of you out there who are currently not as satisfied not as happy and fulfilled in your current job in your career then that channel might be something for you next question <laughs> and this is actually quite funny so this person wrote in Indonesian I'm gonna translate it for you he's asking uh, your husband about my husband your husband is he also Indonesian and his face why is it always blurred why is it always blurred why is his face always blurred uh, and he always just kind of he usually only appears in the background and never really sticks out. I just can't find this suitable translation for this word. So why is his face usually blurred in the videos? Um, the simple reason is that he simply doesn't want to appear in my videos. 
Not yet, at least, and I respect that. But maybe, just maybe in the future, he'll make an appearance in one of my videos. Also, the question, is he Indonesian? Yes, my husband is also Indonesian. He was actually born in Indonesia and he spent his entire life in Indonesia up until the point that we moved to Canada. So he is actually, you could say he's originally from Indonesia. Have you ever mixed up languages when you speak since you know English, German, and Bahasa Indonesia? Oh, good question. I think that I rarely, almost never mix them up. Maybe there were one or two occasions where I accidentally said something in German to my husband, but there was never the case where I just mixed them up mid-sentence. And if you think about it, it's actually quite amazing that our brains can do that. So if you're bilingual, and I'm sure that many of you are, some even trilingual, you can just switch from one language to the other and you won't mix up everything and create a mess. Follow-up question, what language do you think in? Someone asked me this question once, but I haven't really figured out the answer because I think that once I think of this question, what language do I think in, I might no longer be doing my natural thing. I think it's a mix of German and Indonesian if I think. But when I think aloud, so when I'm speaking to myself while thinking, then I think I also think in English in addition to the other languages, but I don't think that I often think in English in my head. And sometimes, you know, I'm not even sure that I always think in a language because a lot of times things come to thought as images rather than words. But it's a really interesting question and I think I'll try to observe that more in the future. Next question, also from an Indonesian viewer, he's asking, what nationality do I have now? So what passport do I have now? So right now I have an Indonesian passport, Indonesian citizenship. I do not have German citizenship because in Germany, you do not just automatically get the German passport just because you're born there. But for all those of you who are curious to know, I am currently considering getting Canadian citizenship. Um, I have some thoughts on that, but I will keep you updated and I will let you know pretty soon. Next question. I am a financially struggling international student in Toronto. How to stay resilient? So in other words, how not to give up and how to be hopeful and keep on working on it, uh, building wealth, although it's tough. And I know it's not easy. Many people are going through this at the moment, not just international students, but people in general, people who have grown up here, Canadians as well as immigrants are having a tough time. So it's not easy to stay resilient. But one of the things that at least I personally do that I think is really important is that you have to know exactly what you want. You have to know what your goals are, not just the small goals like I want to save up $10,000 or I want to buy a home, but I think you need to have a much larger vision to sustain you, at least for the next 10 years, uh, for the next decade. If you have a clear vision in front of you, there's something really meaningful and important that you want to achieve in the future, then I think that things become much, much easier to bear. And I also think that having faith is very important. Faith that in the future, things can get better, no matter how bad they might seem at the moment. And of course, not just hoping and hoping, but also realizing that a lot of things that will happen in your future for better or worse are in your hands. They're in your control and you might not believe it, but yes, there are a lot of small things um, that you can do on a daily basis, habits like saving money, investing money that in the short term might seem like they don't really have a large impact, but in the long term do accumulate to something bigger. Yeah, so I don't really talk a lot about these kind of things on this channel here, but on my other channel, Multiple Careers, I address these things a lot. How to build a vision for the future, how to improve your life, what things you can do on a daily basis to have a better career, a more fulfilling life. So if you think that that's something useful to you, then you might want to check out that channel as well. Yeah, so that wraps it up, guys. I hope that this was interesting and entertaining to you. After this, some of you probably have more questions. If you do, then please feel free to write them down in the comment section below. And same as last time, I might not answer them directly 
directly there but i will answer them next time in another celebration or milestone video so i did one at 10,000 subscribers 20,000 subscribers but at the pace that i'm going i should probably not do a milestone celebration at every 10,000 so probably i'll do one at 40k or 50k and this reminds me of in case you're not subscribed to my channel yet but you like watching my videos and you want to get notified then why not subscribe and while you're at it also hit the notification bell and very important set it to all notifications so each time there's a new video from me you will get notified it will help my channel growth immensely and we'll get to that 50k or perhaps even 100k much much faster <sighs> okay guys that was it for today have a happy Happy March and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye!